Sarve Bhyonamaha. I welcome you all to this engaging set of lectures on the great historian Acharya Jadunath Sarkar, so eloquently, so endearingly delivered by our good friend Sandeep Balakrishna. Today, the first series of this lecture will uh, find completion. Sandeep has envisaged the lecture series in such a way that he has given us a comprehensive introduction into the various facets that went on to make the personality of Acharya Jadunath Sarkar. And in the forthcoming set of lectures, he will probably introduce us in greater detail to the works of the great Acharya, which have made his name rightfully memorable. Uh, Sandeep, in the course of these lecture series, has introduced as, like I said, to various aspects of the great man's personality. He began with the personal history of Jadunath Sarkar, and uh, what was most instructive is the way in which Sandeep uh, placed the contribution of Jadunath Sarkar in the proper historical context, not just starting with Jadunath Sarkar himself, but the uh, larger backdrop of Bengal during the time of Jadunath Sarkar's father, and uh, the general state of historical study, etc. And uh, he also narrated to us the fascinating story of how Jadunath Sarkar prepared himself to uh, secure the prestigious Premchand Roychand scholarship. And when we listen to such anecdotes narrated with such warmth and uh, with such enduring and endearing wisdom, <coughs> we feel that people like Sandeep should uh, take up really giving lectures and writing more about such people because that is uh, a great lacuna that we feel in all subjects related to the Indian cultural heritage these days. And uh, he also uh, uh, spoke to us about the various works of Jadunath Sarkar, starting with, of course, his magnum opus on the life of Aurangzeb. And also what uh, made the whole series of lectures most endearing was the human interest that was present throughout. For example, yesterday when he narrated to us the travels that Jadunath Sarkar had to undergo in tracing the various historical documents, not just from established libraries, but from all corners of the state from Bengal, from Maharashtra, for example, to write the personal history of Shivaji in two different ways. So he rightfully stressed on a point that we take so many things for granted, but uh, the undertones and overtones of all those works remain to be uh, understood by people uh, today. And um, he also introduced to us the various other works of Jaduna Sarkar, such as the military history of India, India through the ages, and so many other works. What is unfortunate is that these works 
have been willfully neglected willfully cast aside by the so called mainstream academia and uh, they have gone on to twist the facts of history related to aurangzeb himself and uh, we must all really hold our head slow in shame when we recognize the fact that the facts that were unearthed by jadunath sarkar are today being obfuscated by so called historians but it is also quite heartening to see interest being revived in jadhuna sarkar in recent times for example there have been two books that have come out one by tca raghavan uh, history men which relates to jadhuna sarkar and two other people who were his contemporaries and one other very insightful comprehensive study by professor deepesh chakravarti the calling of history so interest has been revived in jadhuna sarkar so it is our fervent hope and aspiration that sandeep's present set of lectures will pave the way for more interest more studied interest and more comprehensive study of indian history as a whole with acharya jadunath sarkar and his likes to lead the way so with these word few words i request shatavadhani dr r ganesh to please come on stage and present sandeep with a small token of our gratitude like i said this is the first series in this um, uh, in this uh, talks sandeep will give us more insights into jadunath sarkar's life and works in future talks to come so we invite you to those talks as well the dates will be announced uh, momentarily and uh, starting tomorrow we have vidwan ganesh bhatt hopefully talk to us about lalita sahasranama we invite all your participation for that as well i request sandeep to please begin today's lecture thank you thank you shashi for uh, once again for your uh, generous words and a very succinct uh, summation of uh, uh, yesterday and today's uh, uh, day before yesterday's session and uh, a very good evening and a very warm welcome once again to the third day of this lecture series titled uh, jadunath sarkar the ascetic majesty of indian history uh and like we did uh, yesterday let's quickly recap some highlights uh, that we saw over the last uh, uh, two sessions so on the first day we got an overall introduction to acharya jadunath sarkar's stature in the realm of indian history including some basic biographical details from his childhood his early education uh, the way he prepared for his uh, school and college and later you know his ba and ma degrees his love for history and we closed the first day session with uh, the highly inspiring story of how jadunath uh, sarkar wrote the comprehensive history of aurangzeb in five volumes and in yesterday's session we went on a journey tracing the stories of how uh, jadunath sarkar wrote the four majestic volumes uh, of the fall of the mogal empire uh an actual his second magnum opus uh, unfortunately uh, like i said yesterday it has been largely forgotten and then we also looked at some of his contributions to the history of shivaji and the maratha empire as well as his unremitting scholarly work in writing the history of bengal and we closed yesterday's uh, discussion with uh, some details of his prolific contributions to various journals magazines new and newspapers both in english and bengali <clears throat> but in all honesty what i have tried to do in these two days was to offer a brief history of this historian himself and if i can summarize this in a different way over the last two days i have attempt, attempted to tell the story of the making of an original and a pioneering scholar of history who narrated the truths of indian past in a manner that only he could narrate and i think this detailed story of how acharya jadunath sarkar became a scholar it also serves as an appropriate segue that leads us to another essential qualification of a scholar uh, as understood by the indian tradition which is jadunath sarkar's capacity and his self imposed duty to transmit his scholarship his knowledge to the succeeding generation 
I use the term self-imposed duty consciously because for countless centuries, teachers in Bharata Varsha at all levels, that is from those who taught the Balapatha, I don't want to call it KG, I think Balapatha is an appropriate term. So from teachers at that level, all up to the advanced Vidwans and Pandits in Kashi and other great places of learning, how they led their lives with a sacred conviction that if they did not transmit their knowledge to the next generation, they would incur papa. So this was the bedrock of our entire outlook towards uh, education. And here I'm reminded of a highly memorable, a very touching incident in uh, another great Vidwan, Mahamahopadhyaya Hanagal Virupaksha Shastri's life. And it is narrated so memorably, so evocatively by none other than Sri D.V. Gundappa in his uh, Gnapaka Chitra Shale volumes. So once uh, Sri Virupaksha Shastri is informed that he would be honored with the title Vidyanidhi as a mark of high recognition of his service to scholarship. And true to his profound and eminent character, Sri Shastri refuses to accept it, but after much persuasion, he finally somehow manages to agree, and he says yes. And when the day of the honor, the function actually arrives, Sri Hanagal Virupaksha Shastri deliberately tries to disappear. And DVG and uh, his other disciples and admirers finally locate, you know, roam around all these roads here, Chamraj Pet, Basangudi, and finally manage to locate them somewhere, and they almost drag him to the function. And uh, once the proceedings begin, Sri, Virupak, uh, Sri Virupaksha Shastri, he seats his own guru on the podium and he sits by his guru's feet. And when he is asked the re reason for his stubborn behavior, he says, and this is an extraordinary thing that, you know, has remained, uh, will remain or has remained with everybody who has read it. So this is what he says. Look, I am touched by all your affection and your reverence and respect for me. You know, I, um, you say that I must accept this title of Vidyanidhi and sure, I might just accept it. But there is just one other person out there who all of us have to face and that person is Yama or Dharma and he will ask me, Yava Vidyage Nino Nidhiyo, Yava Vidyage Nino Nidhiyo. So, tell me, you all tell me what I should answer him. And I think nothing defines our entire civilizational values or cultural heritage better than this. This is not a story uh, because Sri Virupaksha Shastri lived in flesh and blood less than a century ago. He walked around these streets, like I said, and sanctified them. Uh, anyway, but the point is that our view of education is actually a sacred truth that was transmuted into a profound conviction only after it was rigorously subjected to a test of longevity. And this, I think, is one of the origins of the value known as duty. In this context, teaching as a sacred duty and... Uh, Hanagal Shri Virupaksha Shastri was uh, a traditional Vaidika Vidwan, while Acharya Jadunath Sarkar had been educated in the mold of the European University, but as teachers and educators, both of them shared the same values towards education and learning. But in the India of their time, education or teaching had degenerated into a mere profession, and in fact, it was a flagrant violation of our educational tradition which severely condemns what is known as Vidya Vikraya or the sale of knowledge. But then as I mentioned, uh, uh, already mentioned, in Jadunath Sarkar's time, even the notion of duty as an intrinsic value to be pursued for its own sake was being eroded at a rapid pace. And like his illustrious contemporaries, Acharya Jidunath Sarkar was among the fading generations of Hindu teachers that abided by these traditional norms. And this actually sets the backdrop for today's edition. 
Jadunath Sarkar was a professor and uh, as we all know, a professor is an academic title, but in reality, he was an Acharya, Acharya in every sense and I'll expound on this over the course of today's uh, talk. His houses in Calcutta, in Patna, in Darjeeling, they were all gurukulas for the student who had earned the fortune to stay there and it was a fortune whose foundations were humility and a sincere quest for knowledge. The Acharya's wife, her name is Srimati Kadambini Sarkar, she was the Guru Mata to his students in every sense of the word. And Jadunath Sarkar personally but indirectly groomed three generations of extraordinary scholars who followed his mold. Let's begin. But first, we must also recall another forgotten value in this context. And this is the importance of the personal touch of the Guru as opposed to the current trend, disgusting trend of trying to learn everything merely through books and even worse, through the internet. Radha Kumud Mukherjee, another brilliant scholar, another great contemporary of Jadunath Sarkar, he describes this in a wonderful fashion and I quote, the teacher holds the pupil within him as in a womb. He impregnates him with a spirit and delivers in him a new birth. And this is the birth of knowledge. This constant and intimate association between teacher and student is vital to his education. The pupil is to imbibe the inward method of the teacher, the secrets of his efficiency, the spirit of his life and all these things are too subtle to be taught." Close quote. In other words, true education is a living relationship between the Guru, the Shishya and the subjects of study. And Jadunath Sarkar not only had all these qualities, not only imbibed, you know, transmitted these qualities to his uh, disciples, uh, which is also why he generated quite an impressive legion of devoted disciples who in turn attained eminence as historians and scholars in their own right through this sort of personal and intimate contact with him. And here is a brief list of some of his illustrious disciples. Dr. K. R. Kunongo, I have mentioned his name in the last two days, who went on to become a distinguished scholar of history. And he specialized in the Muslim period and made a very good study of uh, uh, the Islamic period as well. Uh, he has written a fantastic book called uh, The Impact of Islamic, The Overall Impact of Islamic Rule in India. It is unfortunately out of print. Then there was Dr. P.C. Roy Chowdhury, another great scholar. And uh, you have G.S. Das and another great uh, scholar of history, especially of the British and Sikh period. His name is Dr. Suraj Narayan Rao from Jind, which is in Punjab. And uh, we have our own Dr. K. Neela Kanta Shastri, whose most famous work is a short history of South India. We have Dr. Ail Srivastava, Birendra Nath uh, Bose, Jogesh Bagal, uh, Sri Shanti Swaroop Talwar, Dr. Hariram Gupta, and not last, not the lean, and the last but not the least, Maharaja Raghuveer Singh. And uh, uh, I'll share a couple of anecdotes about him later. All of these disciples held the Acharya in the highest reverence and paid him glorious tributes on numerous occasions. And one of the crowning uh, uh, jewels, crown jewels of all these tributes was uh, a beautiful project. Some of these disciples came together and they produced a superb volume commemorating the life and achievements of Acharya Jadunath Sarkar. It is titled The Life and Letters of uh, uh, Sri Jadunath Sarkar. I think it is uh, still available if I'm not mistaken. And this project, this effort, it was led by the general editorship of uh, Sri Hariram Gupta, uh, a history professor at the Punjab University. And all these students unanimously praised their Acharya as a true Shishya Vatsala, a dear friend and a dear well-wisher of uh, his students. And Jadunath Sarkar was often compared to a ripe coconut, which, is, which has a hard shell on the outside, but is soft, delicious, and nourishing inside. 
one can stretch this analogy further and invoke another word kalpavriksha or the tree that gives us everything and uh, we can apply it roughly to this coconut uh, tree analogy because it is said that there is no part of the coconut tree that is not useful and this is what the acharya students exactly discovered in him they also compared him to a master lamp that lit a thousand other lamps and indeed reading all these accolades so loving lovingly and respectfully penned by his disciples it is a great joy and a delight and a pleasure and an education by itself and the reverence of uh, jadunath sarkar students they catapult straight from their heart and transform themselves into prose on paper for starters i will read out some portions from two tributes the first one is by dr p c roy choudhury and i quote the very first thing that attracted me to dr jadunath was the disciplined manner in which he walked to the college with books in his hand the measured way in which he spoke in the class the precise notes he dictated and the very disciplined manner in which he conducted himself both inside and outside the class it was a pleasure to hear dr jadunath's regimented words from the chair in the debates or in lecture halls but this is just the trailer which pc roy choudhury has given us the full movie is truly extraordinary and roy choudhury was jadunath sarkar's student in the ravenshaw college in katak so he narrates how in the year 1922 Acharya Jadunath Sarkar led a batch of students of history on a tour of some of the important historical places in northern India. Roy Choudhury was also part of the tour and he writes with intense emotion how Jadunath Sarkar showered love and affection and care on his students. He ensured that the students were always comfortable and he tried to lessen their feelings of separation from their homes. and here is what happened an incident that happened uh, in that historical tour and i quote jadunath sarkar guided the boys for imbibing a spirit of historicity and particularly the parental fe- feelings that he showed when one of the boys fell ill in at rajgir weave a picture which can never be blotted out of the memory of this writer a copy of a book uh, that jadunath sarkar presented to me after the trip for what he called my devotion is still a valued treasure thumba passionate ag bardidare close quote so we will return to roy choudhury uh, a couple of times uh, later in this lecture but first before that here is a second tribute as i promised paid to uh, jadunath sarkar by another devoted student his name is dr g s das so this is what uh, g s das writes i found in him a great scholar a perfect gentleman and an embodiment of plain living and high thinking and to all his alumni he appeared as an ideal his lectures displayed an unfathomable depth of his understanding and knowledge of almost all the past as well of as of the latest publications on the subject every lecture was supplemented by exact references to a large number of books and journals with the names of their authors and library members for uh, library numbers for the benefit of advanced students lecture al class lecture al helta iddo he is a voracious reader and like ulysses he was and he is endlessly on a passionate quest for ever widening his knowledge in fact I have hardly come across an Indian who understands the value of time better than him. During leisure hours when other professors would be seen resting, Jadunath could be unmistakably seen in the library or in his study reading and thinking. During these hours he was so absorbed in his studies that the sudden entrance of anybody could not disturb his tranquility. and one had to make some disturbing sound and in my case a loud artificial coughing to attract his attention close quote ee 
ಇಂಥದ್ದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಓದೋದು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಈ ಕಾಲದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಜನರು ಅದೇನೇನೋ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪು ಪರ್ಸ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟು ಮೋಟಿವೇಷನಲ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪೀಚಸ್ ಇದನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಸಚ್ ಅಸಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫಿಲ್ತ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಫಿಲ್ತ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫೀಡ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೀವ್ಸ್ ಅ ವಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಸರ್ಕಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಬೆಟರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋಸಿವ್ ಪಾಪ್ಯುಲಾರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಚ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೇಜರ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಡೌನ್ಫಾಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ when we abandon stalwarts like jadunath sarkar sorry hage irutta adu but uh, gs das also writes what uh, that jadunath sarkar was the very reason that at a very young age when he was as young as say in the 7th standard he writes that jadunath was the reason that he was inspired to take up history both as a subject of study and a career ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಕಷ್ಟಪಟ್ಟು ಕಾಲೇಜಲ್ಲಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆನರ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ತೊಗೊಂಡು ಸೊ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಕುಡ್ ಸಿಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದ ವೇರ್ ಜದುನಾಥ್ ವಾಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾವು ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ಸೆಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಟು ಪಿ ಸಿ ರಾಯ್ ಚೌಧರಿ ಇನ್ ಅಕ್ಟೋಬರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಜದುನಾಥ್ ಸರ್ಕಾರ್ ಲೆಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟಾರಿಕಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕರ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ರಾಜಗೃಹ ಆರ್ ರಾಜ್ಗೀರ್ ಇನ್ bihar it is an ancient buddhist site and the whole batch of students led by sarkar they were lodged in a dharmashala not in a five star hotel early in the morning jadunath sarkar led his students on a trekking expedition and his objective <coughs> sorry his objective was to show the students the abode of gautama buddha high up in the hills where ajata shatru used to visit the bhagavan regularly for guidance and solace <clears throat> and after a long and exhausting trek the entire party reached the peak and finally sat down to take rest all of them except jadunath sarkar because the moment they reached the top the acharya erupted in a passionate lecture on the spot about buddha various incidents from his life the importance of this place uh you know details of the magadha kingdom ajata shatru and so on and uh, the next scene that unfolded after his lecture and that survey of the whole place is described again by roy choudhury it is extraordinary with rapt attention we listen to our leader and master relating to us the incidents of the lord buddha's sojourn at the spot in the days of the yore in the days of yore but before descending from the hill top jadunath said that he had discovered a shorter route which passed through a precipice we decided to try this new path ignoring the perils of the descent at one spot we found that the only means of getting down was to take a leap into the dark below all of us were unaware that the spot on which one could jump from the precipice was on an uneven piece of ground it was an unknown terrain full of dense shrubs covering the big boulders the 53 year old jadunath was the first to jump down he lost his balance owing to the uneven nature of the ground and then rolled down shrieking on the way that he was lost but he was ordering us to have a right about turn and to take the original route Although injured badly in several parts of his body which was full of cuts and bruises he withstood the strain bravely and asked me to inform the party to take the original route close quote and today we have alleged teachers and professors who hand out phd degrees in exchange for money or a bottle of imported liquor or both if this was a great fortune of uh, jadunath sarkar's direct disciples we are also treated to a fabulous world of his ekalavya shishyas and i will narrate the story of just one such ekalavya shishya and uh, his name was brojendranath banerji and uh, coincidentally or rather not coincidentally he was also jadunath sarkar's most aged research pupil measured in terms of uh, age now brojendranath uh, 
was actually working as a typist and a clerk in a merchant's office in Calcutta and he had never seen even the door of a college. But when he was in his late 30s, uh, Rajendranath was first introduced to Jadunath Sarkar through his majestic works on history and the impact was so profound that Rajendranath became a self-taught research himself. He hardly knew any English, like he didn't have proficiency in English because he thought, spoke and wrote in Bengali and eventually began to specialize in the history of Bengal. As he published his uh, research works, uh, his work naturally attracted Jadunath Sarkar's attention and this time the master sought out the pupil. However, in this case, Jadunath did not ask for, for the thumb of Brajendranath but actually helped him by supplying money, material and the entire might of his own scholarship. And the outcome was a series of scholarly works written in Bengali related mostly to Mughal history and Bengal history. And I will read out some titles. One, Begums of Bengal, Noor Jahan, Begum Shomru, uh, Mughal Juge Stri Shiksha or the Education of Women in the Mughal Period and Jahan Ara. G.S. Sardesai uh, narrates how Jadunath Sarkar molded this Ekalavya disciple and I quote, It was a miracle wrought by Jadunath who turned this humble clerk into the best original researcher in Bengali and made him a prolific writer of historical books of approved worth. Brojendranath's achievement in constructive historical research relating to Bengal is greater than that of Jadunath himself. Close quote. Guru Vige Minchida Shishyanta Ida. And this humble clerk living in a decrepit and des desolate house barely had any money or resources to fund such researches, but he doggedly persisted for several years and in the end he produced a real masterpiece the you know crowning glory of his uh, uh, or his lifetime work lifetime achievement and this was a work in three volumes titled again in bengali it is titled uh, sambad patrer shakaler kota or stories of the newspapers of the past and very soon uh, these volumes became an indispensable reference work for any research in the 19th century history of British rule in Bengal. When Brajendranath passed away in 1952, just six years before Jadunath, the Acharya felt as if somebody had physically struck him a blow. It affected him very deeply and uh, uh, to quote Sardesai's words, this loss was a scar that Jadunath mourned like the departure of his own son. And like I said, Brojendranath Banerjee was not a direct student of Jadunath, but this Acharya sought him out, chiseled him and encouraged him to excel the master himself. And it was precisely these traits in Jadunath, that is spotless character and conduct, discipline, constant devotion to study, strict timekeeping, a no-nonsense approach, but above all, a deep and genuine feeling and affection that he demonstrated by chiseling his students instead of merely speaking charming nonsense to them. It was all these traits working harmoniously inside Jadunath Sarkar that made a prince submit to him. The name of this prince was Maharaja Kumar Raghuvir Singh of the Sita Mao princely state. He later went on to become its uh, Maharaja and he was uh, the celebrity disciple who had the benefit of be also being Jadunath Sarkar's youngest disciple. In fact, the Acharya left such a lasting imprint on Raghuvir Singh that uh, this prince he spent almost his entire fortune to build a magnificent research library in Sita Mao. The Maharaja Raghubir Singh Library, that is what it is called, 
it is described as the only self contained institution for research in the history of the muslim period of india and professor hariram gupta he says that this library was even better than jadunath sarkar's own library today the maharaja raghuveer singh library it deservedly stands as one of the most splendid national treasures of india but we don't know how many scholars actually go there and in this connection i am compelled to offer another anecdote and this is given by dr suraj narayan rao uh, from the jind princely state in punjab and he was another blessed scholar who had the fortune of being mentored by acharya jadunath sarkar during one of their conversations jadunath told him to visit the raghubir singh library where he would find even more research material for a thesis that suraj was working on at that time and not only that jadunath also gave him a handbook of the library which had the complete details of of the catalog of all the books uh, journals magazines letters records primary sources correspondence that he would find in the library it was like a guide uh, uh, book to the library and he also advised suraj narayan to write to maharaja raghuveer singh about his thesis and we will now listen to the next part of this story directly from suraj narayan and i quote my visits to the learned prince of sita mau and his library which later on led to a much closer association with him proved an event of singular importance in my life i found the maharaja kumar a true replica of sir jadunath a noble student must imbibe the qualities of his worthy teacher close quote but the flashback of this story is even more interesting and highly moving in parts suraj narayan rao like i said he was working on a thesis and this uh, the subject of his thesis was uh, a specialized history of the sutlej states for the period from 1800 to 1849 he was directed to seek jadunath sarkar's guidance for studying and understanding some persian manuscripts related to that period but at that time suraj narayan neither knew jadunath sarkar directly much less uh, his home address and so what suraj did was that he took out a postcard and he simply wrote the following words in the address space uh, of that postcard to jadunath sarkar comma care of the postmaster calcutta the letter actually reached acharya jadunath sarkar and after this uh, the two of them met frequently uh, and uh, suraj narayan was taking all sorts of valuable guidance from uh, uh, jadunath sarkar and on one occasion he spent 3 weeks 3 entire weeks staying in jadunath sarkar's home and uh, suraj narayan describes the whole experience in an extremely evocative fashion i will read out some expert uh, excerpts because i simply can't do justice to the original by paraphrasing it so here goes sir jadunath led me to his drawing room and bade me to sit on the sofa without engaging in any formality he asked me to give him the list of the books and manuscripts that i wanted to consult with that list he went inside and within a few minutes he came out with a pile of books in his hands he put them on a table and asked me to work on them i kept on working on the literature supplied to me right up to 4 pm when the door opened and in came jadunath this time with two cups of tea in his hands he sat down in a chair offered me one of the cups and silently sip the other cup himself while going back he instructed me to leave behind the list of material that i needed the next day it was on the third day that one of his grandsons came to me and politely pointed to me the bathroom for use and on the fifth day a chance event brought him closer to me he introduced me to the principal of the military academy of dehradun uh this is the ima famous ima he is saying meet the jind historian professor rao a very industrious young man 
These words filled me with joy and pride. I had been told that Sir Jadunath recognizes nothing but merit. His words clearly indicated that he was not at all indifferent towards me, but was rather very keenly observing my attitude towards work. Like our old Rishis, Sir Jadunath also believes in carefully testing the seriousness of purpose in a student before admitting him, before admitting him into his fold. But I am not done yet. Acharya Jadunath Sarkar not only admitted Suraj Narayan Rao into his fold, but mentored him personally and it was mentoring in the real sense and not spoon feeding. And in Suraj Narayan says uh, uh, some uh, stuff about this and I quote, He takes genuine pleasure in leading young seekers after knowledge all the way towards their goal. It is for this reason that we find today the lamps lighted by Jadunath Sarkar's own lamp burning in every nook and corner of this country. Close quote. And uh, Suraj Narayan's description of his last day in this great Acharya's home, it was not a home, it was a Gurukula like I said. It is deeply moving and I just can't resist the temptation to read it out. I can never forget my last meeting with Sir Jadunath Sarkar. He came into the drawing room. I conveyed my sense of gratitude and indebtedness in as appropriate a manner as I could. The learned old seer seemed visibly moved and restraining his emotions a little, he spoke to me in a clear yet low tone. I may not live to see the day I may not live to see that day, but your devotion and industry are sure to earn for you the degree that you are trying for. This parting blessing of Sir Jadunath touched the most sensitive chords of my heart and in a mood surcharged with a deep sense of reverence, I touched his feet. I was too overwhelmed to speak and bowed to him with folded hands and left his room. Acharya Jadunath Sarkar left the mortal world 10 years after this episode. And then we have uh, the words of the other eminent scholar of history, Dr. K. Nilakanta Shastri, I mentioned his name earlier, who was also briefly mentored by Jadunath Sarkar uh, while uh, Shastri was studying uh, at the Banaras Hindu University. And uh, Shastri echoes the words of uh, Suraj Narayan Rao about Jadunath's approach to teaching. He says that Jadunath always encouraged and went out of his way even to help junior scholars, but, and I quote Dr. Shastri here, but the moment he suspects a sham, he quietly turns his back and thinks no more about the person concerned. His magnificent library of books and manuscripts is available for use by any true scholar who is business-like and efficient. But to summarize the Acharya's approach, I mean, there is literally some uh, uh, eight to ten such uh, uh, tributes to him, but uh, uh, I have to summarize uh, the Acharya's approach and method of training his uh, students. Uh, he was a guru in the traditional fashion, and uh, whether it was his direct disciples or other researchers or scholars, he would first put them through an extremely rigorous test and typically this involved making them wait for several hours or days or even weeks. And then if, he, if they passed that test, he would casually ask them leading questions to gauge their knowledge, level of knowledge and the sincerity of their interest before opening up the inexhaustible reserve of his knowledge. He would also quickly see through the superficial and the fake and the phony. And quite naturally, the other side of this coin was the fact that Jadunath Sarkar did not spoon feed his students and scholars who sought his guidance and the ancient Indian or ideal of learning was dear to his heart. You don't know a subject until you can summon it at will. Jihwa Gragnana and things like that. 
and self learning and self mastery was the only method to acquire this command over any knowledge and jadunath not only offered his guidance as a guru but in countless cases he also gave financial help from his own pocket to the deserving students and uh, here we can once again invoke the fine assessment of dr p c roy choudhury in this context and i quote he is a man of very strong likes and dislikes probably he carries his dislikes to an excessive degree as it appears to the average man but at the bottom of that dislike lies a very strong aversion for untruth dishonesty and the cut and paste type of research plagiarism he hates and he is the last man to mince words or matters he never spoon fed his scholars and students he never denied them guidance and monetary help if necessary there are hundreds of them today who have actually been created by him from the scratch but no one hears him parading their names before anyone close quote and in this area as well jadunath has a perfect match in that other great stalwart from our own mysore acharya m hiriyanna who silently helped several poor students and meritorious students with financially assistance but on the condition that they should not disclose the matter to anybody and one student found it out the hard way when he said that uh, professor hiriyanna has helped me anyway clearly that was an era of real giants and then uh, we also have another highly illuminating episode uh, given by another student of jadunath sarkar i have already mentioned his name a couple of times he was none other than professor hariram gupta he was the same scholar who compiled jadunath sarkar's uh, commemoration volume so when hariram gupta was still a research scholar pursuing his phd Jadunath Sarkar was one of his examiners he was impressed with Gupta's thesis and strongly recommend recommended the university of lahore to publish it and that is where he was he had enrolled for his uh, phd but the university declined and so jadunath sarkar voluntarily wrote a letter to hariram gupta and asked him for the manuscript copies of the thesis and then he spent several week on the thesis reading rewrite uh, rereading correcting and revising the whole document and finally he sent it to calcutta for printing and after the print proofs arrived jadunath personally sat and corrected all the proofs and then sent the final copy for print and once the printed volumes came out he couriered some copies to hariram gupta who was then in lahore and i think jadunath was in calcutta and the best part the most magnanimous part is that jadunath sarkar refused to accept any money for this work he said it was his duty as a teacher and uh, but after months of solid persuasion jadunath finally accepted only the cost of paper and binding in fact the beautiful treasure trove of letters uh, between jadunath sarkar and g s sardesai mentions this incident and that is a first hand proof that we have the first letter is dated 30th march 1939 and it is written by sarkar to sardesai and i quote i am supervising the printing of the doctorate thesis of hariram gupta which we had agreed to partly subsidized subsidize out of the kamshet history meet special fund it have it has cost me an enormous amount of time but happily my editing work is nearly finished the second letter is dated 27th september 1939 and it reads please send me 100 rupees from the kamshet week publication fund i have already paid on this account nearly 500 or 550 rupees remember that hariram gupta had no idea of the kind of work and even 500 rupees at that time 
uh, was actually a large sum of money and the total cost including printing binding everything uh, came up to about 100 uh, 1500 rupees and hariram gupta gives a neat uh, actually jagannath sarkar gives a table of expenses accounts koti dare and uh, hariram gupta was profoundly and deeply moved at jagannath sarkar's magnanimous eminence and he paraphrased uh, a small verse from the english poet campbell and i'll read it out such is jagannath the man there is nothing spectacular about him and yet he is without question lordly more than a man but what was truly spectacular about this lord of all men was his character and hariram gupta also gives us another phenomenal episode that only elaborates corroborates and confirms the acharyatva or the acharya hood of jagannath sarkar and uh, on one occasion a so called eminent professor of a famous university in india and uh, hariram gupta doesn't mention the name of the professor or the university unfortunately uh, this so called eminent professor was the supervisor of some phd thesis and unfortunately for the professor jagannath sarkar was appointed as one of the examiners of this thesis and it, it didn't take long for sarkar to discover the fact that this professor in his capacity as the supervisor of the thesis this professor had taken zero interest in that capacity sarkar was completely outraged and he wrote a stinging letter to the university's vice chancellor and i'll read out a delicious excerpt from that letter the learned professor has taken no interest in the work of the candidate who has acted like a cow let loose in a green field please warn the professor appropriately so this is what a uh, uh, small sample of that letter and jagannath sarkar's letter produced instant results and uh, that professor was disqualified from becoming a supervisor of any phd thesis for a number of years and among other things this incident reveals the honest atmosphere of pure scholarship and integrity that had prevailed in the realm of education in the india of that era and just a month ago we read news of uh, some vice chancellor who surrendered himself and you know got himself arrested so alig bandi there and this was not an isolated incident by temperament jagannath sarkar was endowed with supreme integrity infallible character and conduct and uh, that also made him bluntly forthright and uh, he was thoroughly unforgiving with all such lapses which is which also earned him a lot of enemies throughout the academic world uh, that also eventually uh, contributed in a great measure to his uh, uh, destruction of his career much later in the life and i will narrate that unfortunate story uh, perhaps in the later episodes of this lecture series now shri shanti swarup talwar he was another devoted student of acharya jagannath sarkar and he has reverentially described him as a seer and much like suraj narayan rao who compared jagannath sarkar to a rishi he writes in his tribute that jagannath sarkar's life is a life of tapasya and sadhana or austerity and accomplishment and gives us several examples that demonstrate his shishya vatsalya and uh, uh, i'll take a small uh, excerpt he has a craving for knowledge and he laments the indifference on the part of the students in general towards learning he is particularly sore to observe that students gen uh, generally are not genuine seekers after historical knowledge but their sole aim is to get a degree somehow close quote but the rishi like vision of jagannath sarkar also had numerous dimensions spread across different fields and i will have to cite a few brief examples and uh, uh, you know i must indulge here in a slight digression because it doesn't fit any other category now 
almost in a direct attack on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi's paper titled Young India, Jadunath Sarkar wrote a provocative essay in the Hindustan Standard which was dated 25th November 1951, which is three years after Gandhi's death. Uh, the title of this article was Vidar Young India. And I quote, this is beautiful actually. Today, the state of India in most places has become the land owner and it has extinguished the zamindar class. Therefore, morally and legally, the burden of providing for school education must fall on the public exchequer. If you have taken the land, you must bear the full burden of the dues from the land. So, this was a dire prediction and of course, like so many uh, such, when have we heeded wisdom anyway. So, this prediction and so early, he made it so early about the ongoing decline in education has come true in a nightmarish uh, fashion in ever, ever since. And if at all any field has been comprehensively destroyed and ruined, I think it is education. But even more scathingly, Jadunath Sarkar's uh, foresight in the realm uh, of Indian freedom struggle and politics and public life, it was truly, I must say, divine. There's just no other word for it. It was divine. And uh, Jadunath Sarkar belonged to that rare minority of Indians and Hindus who saw through Gandhi and the Congress party even in the era at, uh, of the peak of their popularity. And I'll, you know, mention just uh, two incidents that, you know, show this uh, uh, aspect. The first was Jadunath Sarkar's assessment of something called the Purna Swaraj Resolution that was passed by the Congress session in Lahore in 1929. Jadunath correctly judged that it was just that, a resolution, vacuous and empty. He said that it was a pointed bluster that would have zero impact on the ground and no matter how loudly the Congress leaders yelled, the British were not in a hurry to grant independence. Non-violence clearly was not working. And this was Jadunath's prediction and, and his verdict and his vision. And I quote, A people with watertight class distinctions and mutual hostilities, even when freed from foreign domination, cannot enjoy or deserve political liberty. It will be subject to the autocracy of a clique or a family. Yes. Sure enough, the autocracy came after an alleged independence. It came in the form of the Nehru family and its third rated clique, which is hell-bent on destroying India into pieces, even as I'm giving this talk. And the second episode was Jadunath's analysis of the Gandhi-led freedom struggle. And this is what he wrote in a letter to G.S. Sardesai, which is dated 14th August 1931. That is just two years after the previous incident. A few days prior to the letter, Gandhi had been arrested by the British. He had taken uh, a trip to uh, England to attend a round table conference and when he returned, he was arrested and imprisoned. And this is uh, what Jadunath writes to Sardesai. I see no prospect of civil commotion abating in future. On the contrary, public opinion in England and among Europeans living in India has been roused to such bitterness that the Congressites will soon have to test their strength against the British plus the Muslims. The Hindus are so divided and so foolishly selfish that their majority does not actually count in actual politics. I'll read the last line again. The Hindus are so divided and so foolishly selfish 
that their majority does not count in actual politics. I know this is depressing, but this digression was necessary to illustrate more clearly, more fully illustrate the meaning of the word seer or rishi. A seer is a person who both sees and foresees. Darshana Irono Rishi. But this also has a small uh, uh, you know, context to it. Gandhi was arrested because he made a thorough mess of the negotiation in the round table conference at which even Jinnah was present. You know, a lot of documentary evidence has surfaced, primary letters. Even as Gandhi was, you know, trying to prove that, you know, I am the national leader or whatever, you know, all that nonsense, Jinnah had already entered into correspondence for the past 15 years with Winston Churchill. Completely racist guy who thought Indians were savages and barbarians. Uh, and if he, <coughs> he said that if he had his way, he would exterminate this dark and barbarous race. And he had struck a friendship with Jinnah. And in the roundtable conference, Jinnah finally had the upper hand and won the battle. Jinnah, remember that Jinnah was also part of undivided India. Gandhi made a big flop show. And this is what, you know, this is the context also of Jadunath Sarkar's uh, letter. Anyway, and now to return once more to Jadunath Sarkar's profound legacy as an affectionate and caring guru and teacher, we get another lovely and ennobling incident in his life. And the memory of this incident has been preserved all thanks to G.S. Sardesai, to whom we have to be really indebted because Jadanath Sarkar did not write an autobiography. Bala Namskara Madhveku, Sardesai. And after his retirement for, from the Baroda Samsthan, G.S. Sardesai had uh, permanently shifted his uh, base and his house to the quiet and hilly region of uh, Kamshet in the Sakyatri mountain. A mountain range in uh, Maharashtra to pursue his uh, scholarly activity. And Jadunath Sarkar regularly visited Kamshet as part of their various scholarly collaboration on several projects related to Maratha history and other uh, topics. And this incident took place in April, 9, April 1949 on the Ugadi festival. Now, Kamshet also had a all boys residential school. It was named after the uh, town, Kamshet Residential School. And the principal of that school heard that the great Jadunath Sarkar himself was in town on that day and he wanted his boys to make the best use of this scholar and to take blessings from him. And so the whole party of school boys was led by the principal. They visited Sardesai's house and they met uh, both uh, Jadunath Sarkar and Sardesai, Namskara Madi, and they did all the appropriate uh, salutations, greeted them on uh, the Ugadi festival, and the children sought their blessings. And then the principal put in a request to Jadunath Sarkar and uh, G.S. Sardesai. He said, please, uh, please write a nice message for our boys on this auspicious festival. Sardesai narrates what happened next, and I quote, this is very nice. While I was searching for and hesitating uh, what appropriate words I should write for the boys, Jadunath quietly pulled out a piece of paper and wrote on it in his own hand a line from the Heliodorus pillar inscription at Bilsa. And it reads as follows, which means that the best dharma consists in carrying into practice self-restraint, self-sacrifice and right and noble thinking. What more fitting message from ancient India could a venerable guru like Jadunath Sarkar give to modern India than these words of the Paramabhagavata Heliodorus, a Greek ambassador from Takshashila to the court of Vidisha. This is what in Sanskrit is called up uh, Upasthita Vidya or knowledge at once beck and call as opposed to Pustakastha Vidya or knowledge within the lockup of books and manuscripts. Close quote. The impromptu Agitara Madhira. 
but in this context you know what is even more interesting is that uh, we need to recall the fact that ancient indian history was not jadunath sarkar's area of specialization remember he admitted himself and i told this on the first day that i entered the uh, realm of indian history through the gates of european history and this he quoted from memory this colossus had written down the full text of the heliodorus inscription from his memory and it was sardesai who was stunned more than the principal of that school and it brings us to a related episode excuse me this episode occurred in our own state in hampi and it is narrated once again by sardesai thanks to him again and uh, jadunath and sardesai had been you know touring the ruins of the vijayanagara empire as part of their interminable and innum innumerable historical forays and travels and uh, there when they saw the frieze of the stone carvings in the hall of the sahasra ramaswami temple what is corruptedly known as the hazara ramaswami temple both the scholars were uh, astounded at its beauty and as they stood marveling at it sardesai asked jadunath sarkar to decipher the meaning of the those sculptures the acharya went quiet for a while he closed his eyes and then opened them and immediately began reciting entire bunch of verses from kalidasa's raghuvamsha these verses narrated the story of parashurama's challenge and encounter to shri rama on his way to mithila and we all know the story rama defeated parashurama and sardesai was dumbfounded that this masterly performance uh, of jadunath sarkar but jadunath gave not only you know narrated those verses he also gave the historical literary and cultural context for the carvings there in hampi in that hazara ram swami temple he said the artist who sculpted this entire scene must have had in his mind this description of kalidasa to feed his imagination and guide his chisel and sardesai describes the mind that worked in such an incredible fashion and i quote every small detail name place date source or what apparently would be considered as a useless trifle jadunath would deftly weave into his narrative so as to breathe life and light into them extraordinary villa and i think with that uh, uh, we can come to the last leg of uh, today's session and as i say we have to keep the best for the last and uh, this is a brief but a highly moving and a captivating picture of acharya jadunath sarkar's home which like i said was also a gurukula i will never tire of repeating it throughout his long and stellar life jadunath sarkar maintained three large houses in calcutta patna and darjeeling and for a brief period in uh, katak in orissa and among his other disciples the same pc roy choudhury the old culprit comes back again he gives us a beautiful painting of this picture of jadunath sarkar's house and i quote his love and care for his boys was deep his house whether in katak patna darjeeling or calcutta was always open for them his library was at their disposal provided they conducted themselves properly the kitchen which lady sarkar ran did not make any distinction between her own children and the students or the research scholars who lived in that house that lady within the house was a mother to the scholars living in dr sarkar's home sir jadunath is one of the very few men who do not parade their kindness or their feelings for their students by the time i had graduated sir jadunath had been transferred to patna the real story begins at this point 
Roy Chowdhury, after completing his graduation, he wrote to his guru about you know the marks he had got, and he sought his blessing and guidance for his future studies. And Jadunath Sarkar characteristically replied to that letter in great detail, including his you know guidance. <laughs> he almost ordered uh, Roy Chowdhury to come to Patna immediately and pursue his MA there. Uh, because Patna had one of the finest history departments and uh, that university had one of the finest history departments in all of uh, India uh, because the Patna of those days was not the Patna of Lalu Prasad Yadav. But uh, P.C. Roy Chowdhury's uh, mother was a traditional Hindu widow and uh, she was hesitant and anxious to send her son so far away to this unknown land. And so, what Jadunath Sarkar did was that he wrote a long and kind letter reassuring this uh, uh, anxious mother that her grown-up son, her child, her ladla was in his safe hands. And so the matter was settled there. And after this, Jadunath wrote one more postcard to Roy Chowdhury giving precise details of the journey that he must make from Calcutta to Patna and this details includes, you know, the exact amount of the fare, Tonga fare, that he must, you know, take, he must give to the Tonga driver from the Patna railway station to Jadunath Sarkar's uh, house. Rupai paisa ana. Ishtuno bardidra, literally. And uh, so, Roy Chowdhury reached uh, Jadunath's house and uh, this is a physical, he gives us a physical description of that Gurukula. And I quote, Sir Jadunath's house in Patna has a separate wing consisting of a few rooms used as a library by him and by his research scholars living in the house. Dr. K. R. Konango, who was then writing his book on Sher Shah, Dr. K. K. Basu, the head of department of history in the Bhagalpur College, S. C. Sengupta, a research scholar from Bengal, used to be sitting in that wing where a separate room was also allotted to every writer. Every night, led by some eminent lecturer, we all used to go to the main house for dinner with Jadunath Sarkar. <coughs> so, this is Gurukula Alde Indian Hela Kagate. And after a week, uh, Roy Chowdhury felt a little uncomfortable and, uh, you know, shy for staying uh, in Jadunath Sarkar's house. So he applied for a room in the university hostel and he was allotted that room. And he gave that news to Jadunath Sarkar and this is what happened next and I quote. While taking dinner, I casually mentioned to Jadunath that I would shift to the hostel the next day. The professor looked up in surprise and spoke slowly. I did not know that you were inconvenienced here. I did not ask you to come to Patna to prosecute your studies in, for MA while living in a hostel. The dinner was completed in silence on the part of all of us. No one could speak as it was apparent that the professor had got a rude shock. Next morning, a message was sent through one of his children that the idea of going to the hostel must be given up. Then I continued an uninterrupted stay for a couple of years as an inmate of his house. And he concludes this um, anecdote. How many gurus of this type exist now in all of India? And this is just one anecdote that profoundly showcases Jadunath Sarkar's multifaceted dimensions. Uh, for example, as a true Acharya, a flawless teacher uh, who had parent, you know, both paternal and parental affection for his uh, pupils as an infallible guide, and above all, as a great sculptor of the character of three generations. 
यार यार एनी बडी हु हैज बीन अ डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट डिसाइपल ऑफ जदुनाथ सरकार हैव यू नो बिकम लेजेंड्स इन देर ओन राइट सो बट बिफोर वी फाइनली कंक्लूड टूडे सेशन आई विल ब्रीफली लिस्ट आउट सम ऑफ द मेजर माइल स्टोन एंड हलवा सर that that story will come in the in season 2 of this lecture series so i'll briefly list out some of the major milestones and awards that uh, uh, honors uh, in jadna sarkar's uh, professional career we'll begin first with his uh, professional career like i said on the first day of this uh, uh, lecture series Jadunath Sarkar began his career as a lecturer of English literature at Ripon College in Calcutta in 1893 then uh, he was appointed as a lecturer again of English lecturer at Presidency College Calcutta in 1898 then he became a lecturer and later a professor of English and history at Patna College he worked there from 1902 to 1917 he was appointed as a professor of modern indian history at banaras hindu university uh, he worked there from 1917 to 1919 this is uh, he had to quit that university in disgust because of the terrible politics there and uh, that again we have to wait for the second season after uh, bhu uh, he took up a job as a professor of english and history at ravenshah college in katak between uh, 1919 and 1923 uh, finally he became the vice chancellor of the calcutta university from 1926 to 1928 even from there uh, he had to resign avagle uh, question paper leak ko mass copying ela shuru aagit and uh, after 1928 Uh, he became the he was invited to be the uh, sir w mayer lecturer in uh, madras university uh, we don't have any clear information how long he worked in the madras university uh, uh, from 1928 so this is a brief summary of his uh, professional career and now we can uh, uh, look at a list of awards and honors that uh, jadunath sarkar received throughout his life uh, like we said on the first day <laughs> he earned the premchand roychand scholarship prize in 1897 then he also won something called the griffith prize in uh, 1907 idu sumne hobby tara ee prize sikkido he didn't consciously apply for it he won this prize for writing just two or three chapters in the ongoing manuscript of uh, of aurangzeb more chapter submit madidro that dealt with the you know aurangzeb's battle with uh, or the battle for the mogal throne between aurangzeb and shuja so idikke griffith prize sikto and then uh, the royal asiatic society of great britain and ireland they bestowed uh, in 1923 they bestowed an honorary membership which was confined to no more than 30 scholars in the whole world and then the royal historical society of england also conferred on him a corresponding membership in 1935 which again was restricted only to 30 members in the entire world and then the bombay board of the royal asiatic society awarded him something called the campbell gold medal in 1926 and made him an honorary fellow and the royal asiatic society of bengal they also bestowed on him the same honor in the same year that is 1926 uh, the american historical association of washington appointed him as its honorary life member and jadunath sarkar is the only asian among all the honored foreign scholars of these societies it is still a world record uh the dhaka university conferred on him the honorary degree of uh, dlit and then the patna universities also gave him the same honor and uh, finally the british government bestowed on him um, the coveted title of cie 
in 1926 and uh, conferred the knighthood in 1929. That was when he became Sir Jadunath Sarkar from Professor Jadunath Sarkar. And with that, we can conclude the final episode uh, of the first edition of this three-day lecture series commemorating and celebrating the life of the and the eternal legacy of Acharya Jadunath Sarkar. But it is not a conclusion but a pause because so far we have drawn only the contours of the full portrait of this extraordinary savant and titanic scholar of Indian history. And uh, I think we can complete the picture sometime in future. And I once again extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Gokhale Institute of Public Affairs for organizing this lecture series, to Shashi Kiran for his assistance, which is too numerous to mention, to Sri Ramu of this institute, who continues to work his magic silently from behind the scenes, and of course to all of you in the audience for taking out your precious time. Namaste.